welcome back, this is Onigato. I wasn't really planning on bringing you back in quite so fast, but something happened. We were working on finishing up getting the setups for the mega project, getting this area here blocked in, but somebody decided to show up. The vile force of darkness. Consisting of a pile of goblin swordsmen and a single goblin pikeman. I've seen larger ambushes. The Goblin Pikeman is riding on a named cave crocodile. So if we look at the creature itself, and it's only named because it happens to be somebody's pet. Nobody here actually has a special name, so they're not really all that special, uh, which probably explains why I haven't gotten anything other than why I haven't even seen any real goblin anything. So, I set up the alert last time, and I pulled the alert. Makes sense, right? All my civilians are now in the civilian borough. Any civilians that still happen to be outside, well, at least I hope they're smart enough to run away. Very, very far away. Moved my military dwarves out into this area here, which is good, because the goblins are just kind of sitting right here. You can see their leader goblin is right there. Hopefully he's drowning, but he's riding on a crocodile, so I doubt it. Yeah, he's not drowning, much as I wish he was. Well, let's see. Is there anything special about him? Uh, no. He's just a goblin. Pretty big goblin. I was wrong about the drawbridge. Turns out the drawbridge goes the wrong way. Uh, I'm going to have to deconstruct that and rebuild it later on. But not right now. Because there's bad guys outside. So my archer dwarves, well my crossbow dwarves, are over here, just kind of doing their thing, and hopefully, let's see, most of them have their steel crossbows, I've got, I managed to get most of the uh, copper items melted down so we can make that billion. What's this? Uh, that's the hood. Hood. Mitten, mitten, cloak, sock, cloak, 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 quiver. There it is. And his quiver is empty. How about his quiver? Also empty. He doesn't even have a quiver. Why does he not have his quiver? Why does he not have any of his equipment? Okay. His quiver. Empty. He doesn't even have his crossbow. Where is his crossbow? Go get your gear, you... dunce. <sighs> oh, wait a minute. There's somebody, I think... Yes. And he still has 21 more bolts. They're wooden bolts, which means they suck, but they are bolts. That's, well, something. And he has bolts. They are wooden bolts as well. So they are suck. But again, they're something. If you look at the reports, three pages already, and we're doing some damage to the goblins. I'm not going to say we're not doing damage to the goblins, but if you look here, bolt deflected by the iron mail shirt, uh, strikes the goblin in the hand, chipping the bone, that's useful, uh, Tor's tendon, basically anywhere where he doesn't have, you know, really good equipment like his helmet. Uh, at 
hit his eyelid? How did it get deflected by his shirt? I, I don't... Okay, whatever. Uh, right hand. Reach down. This is the guy that's the closest, and he is getting just pelted with these. With these shots, so... I mean, he's up, he's down, he's up, he's down. And we're doing some damage to him. Because we're tearing apart the skin and everything. The problem is that I'm most likely just going to end up sitting here. While they basically don't take very much in the way of damage. Let's take a look at this poor guy. He's got some good stuff. We'll be able to claim when he's dead. Some trousers, robes, cloaks, hoods, some socks. We'll sell the sandals. A ton of his own blood. And we haven't really covered injuries. Uh, red is a fairly significant amount of injury. And you can see he's been hurt. Right lower arm, right hand, right upper arm arm, left hand, right upper leg, left upper leg, right and left lower legs, right foot, right shoulder, wrist, his left fourth toe, and his left true ribs have been damaged pretty significantly. Uh, doesn't look like any of these are actually initially fatal, but he might just bleed out, which would be good. And then of course all of his buddies are just completely uninjured because well, frankly, I can't even target them. No, oh, not this guy. He's got, he's got a bolt in him. That's good. We like bolts and the bad guys. Let's see. Uh, the really nasty part is, if I was to open up the gate, they'd just kill me. I mean, it wouldn't even be a fight. It would just be... Squish. So, yeah. You can see my animals over here don't even realize the goblins are there yet. So the animals are all staying put. If the goblins got a little bit closer, the animals would spook, probably either run up here or just run out over here and then just run away. There's that. Simultaneously, I have a dwarf with a mood. I should probably go take a look at, make sure she's getting everything she needs. Uh, yep, yeah, still running around, picking up her stuff. We've got everything that they, uh, this particular dwarf needs in, this, in the fortress, so... busy making stuff, um, making more pig iron after smelting down limonite and hematite. The bituminous coal and lignite that we traded for is to getting turned into bars as we go through. Uh, I probably need at some point to make another smelter just to basically turn raw materials into useful materials. Cedar bolt strikes him in the upper body, deflected by his iron mail shirt, iron mail shirt, iron mail shirt. See, we're tearing his ligaments, his tendons, but it's just this one. I mean, it's great and all, but it's not really fatal wounds. I also started a little bit of a digging project. The danger room, almost ready. Got the lever in place that we'll use to control it. Oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? Uh, you got all your stuff. Okay, good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. And actually, what 
I can do is I can actually just turn off the civilian alert, honestly. They can't get out. There's no way for them to get out at this point. Oh, and it's spring. How wonderful. Eh, the game's gonna save now. So that's good. Shouldn't take more than a minute or two. Or three. The goblins can't actually even see me. See most of my people. Like down in here. And they can't path this way because they can't go up empty spaces. Um, I am going to change the way this bridge works so that it opens the other way instead. Because I can't build floor there, because as soon as I lowered the bridge, they would destroy the floor. It's fun that way. And with this big old open gap here, if I had any kind of flying creature or Forgotten Beasts don't even care if they can fly or not, they can just get up a level. Okay. And you can see some of my animals have spotted the uh, goblin, who's in extreme distress, and have now run away from him. Up to that little corner up there. And they're pretty much just fine. <laughs> yeah. See, this is what the Marks Dwarves are really good at. Is just basically. Oh, he's turned elite. Let me see. changed their materials. Uh, metal bolts are for combat only. Add bolts. 250 materials. Wood. Uh, wood is never for really any use in combat, honestly, because it just isn't any good for that. Bone bolts. Bone bolts are good for both combat and training to a certain extent. Metal bolts are obviously better for uh, combat. There's a thread on the Bay 12 uh, forums describing dwarven science. I want to post a link to it in the description of this. Uh, video, but basically the basic rule of thumb is that the higher the quality of the metal, metals of equal type are equal. Lesser metals don't do as well against the higher class armors. So steel bolts, well it's silver bolts are the best, steel bolts are the second, Iron bolts are slightly less. Copper and bismuth bronze bolts are down at the bottom, followed by bone and wood. Wood, bolt, wood bolts, if they've got any kind of basic armor, yeah, you get lucky hits, but that's about it. Uh, bone bolts can penetrate most leathers. Uh, bismuth bronze and copper bolts are about equal, and they can penetrate anything but steel and iron on a pretty consistent basis. Iron bolts can penetrate anything except for steel and uh, candy. And steel bolts beat everything except for candy armor. Silver bolts beat everything. Candy, ar uh, candy bolts are useless. They're too light to be useful. Just like a candy... Uh, candy... Warhammer is also useless unless you're using it for justice purposes. 
because it won't do a lot of damage, or it won't have the potential to do a lot of damage. In the hands of an incredibly skilled hammer dwarf, it can still do a lot of damage. Alright, my dwarves. I would really like it if you would go and get more bolts. I think even the two that had bolts are now out of bolts. And seriously, this guy doesn't even have his basics. I mean, seriously, come on. His quiver, his quiver is empty. He doesn't even have, I mean, he has pants and that's about it. Where is his, his quiver is empty. His quiver is empty. I already checked his, I think, yeah. His quiver is empty. I'm just going to reduce that down to the bare minimum number of bolts, and hopefully some of those will be spread out over other things. And hopefully people will go grab some bolts. I was thinking about turning this area up here and here into, like, standing fortress fortifications. But then I realized I can just turn, you know, put walls across here that I'll turn into fortifications and be able to shoot out from there. I will probably also dig this wall out here and just turn it into fortifications as well. But I have to actually clear it completely out and then build walls inside of it. Because it is sand and you can't turn sand into fortifications, you can't turn sand into basically anything useful. Alright, somebody went and got themselves some more bolts. Eh, some pine bolts. And yeah, this guy's got some steel bolts. <laughs> I think I bought some. Come on, hit the guy. Oop, I think that one hit. Uh, he's blocking them. So they've got a chance to do that. Oh look, he finished his project. And it's a... It's a ring. You needed like 15 different items and it's a ring? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You needed nine things. Two of them are gems. You needed some leather, yarn cloth, block, a metal bar, some logs, oh good heavens, what, I mean it's a high wood ring, what, it's a really good quality high wood ring, it's expensive, uh, cushion cut pink jades, decorated with high wood, menaces with spikes of high wood and iron, image of a cave floater and alpaca, uh, image, it has the image of a rectangular cabochon done in pink jade. The pink j the, the, the cabochon is not actually a pink jade cabochon, it is an image of a, of a rectangular cabochon in pink jade. Love that. On the item is the image of Anon, the mountain titan, in giant red leather. Anon is traveling. Huh. Well, that's kind of cool. Image of a... Of a well, Gaelic cross in alpaca wool. And... Clash 
Ash steamed the Galenus scepter, which I believe, yes. So he's putting images of other artifacts that we already have in here. Let's see. How good is this one? This one is eh, 25,000. Not bad. So, basically at this point, we're just kind of sitting here waiting for either the seizures to get bored and leave, or move so that I can shoot them more easily. The good news is, those flying bolts you see going out in the middle of nowhere, they will all be recoverable. They won't be in nice little stacks anymore, but they will be recoverable. Where did that goblin go? Where did he go? Goblin. We did a lot of damage to a goblin and I can't find him. Unless that's him right there. Billy no, that's a billy goat. Oh those three had better not be fighting. Nope. They're just afraid. He's still blocking stuff, he's still getting blocked, he's getting, he's fine, he's blocking all those lovely bolts, zoom to the location, I know he's around here somewhere, where is he? Somebody thought they were going to try to sneak in. Ooh, Goblinite. They have some really nice Goblinite, too. Copper. I'll be able to turn that into more useful stuff, like billion doors and such. But a certain somebody is requesting. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, uh, he's somewhere nearby. He's badly injured. I don't see where he's flashing. Oh, wow. There he is. He's running away. Let's see, what do we do to him? Uh, lower right arm bears a tiny straight scar, marks of old wounds. Left hand bears a tiny straight scar, tiny curving scar, marks both wounds. Bears marks both wounds. So, a lot of broken wounds. Broken bones, but they've all scarred. And. Broken bone, broken bone, broken bone. Left lower arm is torn open, but he's not actually bleeding out. That goblin's gonna get away. That's exactly what he's doing, too. He's just running away now. Eh, whatever. with the actual steel crossbow bolts. That's not you. It's not you. Nope. I do hope whoever it is hasn't actually... 
acquired them and then had them not do any good. Highwood bolts. You need to go get your... You, you do too. I think our steel bolts guy has fired his bolts off and gotten nothing off, but joy. Oh well. Our military guys will go get themselves some alcohol when they need to. Actually. I can just clear their orders. Those that can actually do something are going to continue to do something. Those that can't are going to just run away. Okay, let's see. They're on active training schedule. Oh. Huh. One definite advantage of this place is that people do get rained on a lot if they're outside. So that's kind of useful. Alright. Well, not a lot else going on. See, the real problem is that the dwarves that are trying to do work can see the goblins that are up here and then immediately decide that they're not going to do anything because it looks scary goblin who can't get to you, you stupid sons of... Yeah. Oh well. Uh, add... Military Alt. Alright, and then we're going to sort. why I don't activate her. That is female. I do intentionally not put females in my military unless I absolutely need to. Read my dwarves. Yeah, this is going to take some CPU cycles. can become a perfect hammer dwarf, but is he able to become a good... Yes, very good ultra dwarf. Okay, and... Huh. I only have nine dwarves on duty, what's the... Oh, he still counts as a noble. Huh. He's a master marks dwarf, which is good. These other guys, not so much, but that's okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys on pause, and uh, yeah, see what I can do about this stupid siege. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm going to admit I cheated. I did not kill the goblins, but I did kill the goblins' cave crocodile. And it's not carrying anything anyways. As a result, their leader is now wandering around, meaning he could become a valid target again.
force them to station again. Hopefully they've picked up some ammunition. Actually, let's see if we can kill him. I have a sneaking suspicion he's just going to beat down on some of my animals. So there goes my industry. Yep. And watch the animals run. Oh, that horse is doomed. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I can't look at the reports. Well. Yeah, that horse is doomed. Maybe some of the other horses can escape, but... Come on, horse, stop running away. Fight. I know you've got friends who can actually do it. Well, that's a dead horse. And that's a dead horse. Yeah, it'd be really nice if you guys would actually kill him. very least take some pot shots. Alright, so my goat went back to his place. The pig. Uh, I think it's the water buffalo. Not sure what that is. What is that? An alpaca. Alright, so I used DF hack to exterminate the cave cro the cave crocodile. Uh, it is one of the features in DF hack. You can basically cheat. They were just gonna sit there forever, though. The goblin horde wasn't going to move, and, oh, don't go after my sheep, don't kill my sheep, don't kill my sheep, he's going to kill my sheep, is he, yeah, he's going to kill my sheep, ugh, that poor sheep, let's see, stabs it in the nose, cuts off its nose, knocks it over, cuts off its right rear leg, cuts off its left rear foot, fractures the bone in its right front leg, spills the guts, opens an artery, cuts off the right front hoof, cuts off the left front hoof, thing has no feet now. It's lost its entire right rear leg and all of its hooves are gone. Gets bitten in the upper body. Stabs it in the upper body with the scimitar. Shatters the right false ribs. Shakes it around. Tore a tendon in there. Tearing apart the upper body's fat and bruising the muscle, stabs it in the right front leg, tearing apart the muscle, opens a second artery, several nerves have been severed. Oh look, the U actually gets to attack. And here is the pikeman stabbing him in the right front leg with his silver pike, bruising the bone and tearing a tendon. For you. Alright. Uh, that's not too bad. The donkey actually survives pretty decently. That is a dead horse. Very dead horse. And that's.
that's another dead horse. Alright. That's a very injured sheep. He just got himself cornered, it looks like. Nope, 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 nope. Successfully escaped. Oh, and it's a pet. No, that's a ram. Where's my you? I don't know. That's a ram, and it's running away. Run away, run away. Please run away, my little ram. Yes, run away. We can get you back into your pen later when we have you safe. Several of the goblins are just hanging around here. They typically hang around wherever their leader is. Uh, but you got a goblin running around chasing people down. Uh. And there's a dead cavy. They're bloody guinea pigs, but still... is just... That's a dead guinea pig. That really is just a dead guinea pig. The saddest part is I'm not going to be able to eat any of these animals. I'm not going to be able to butcher them. But where are you going? Where the... No, don't go that way. My alpa alpaca is safe. My ram is moderately safe. Uh, my alpaca is cornered. Maybe not. There's actually a way off of here, but it leads right back into the goblins, so... That is my goat. <laughs> he just keeps coming back to his pen. Is that the... F the you? Oh, that's the ram. He keeps coming back to his pen. What are you guys all doing out here? Oh. Right. They can't go back inside because they can see the big, mean, evil goblins that are right here. They can't see the goblins that are over here because the roof is in the way. shoot something. Do you now have... No, you have your pants, but that's it. Quiver with some water on it, because you're getting rained on. Quiver with some water on it, because you're Rained on. Let's clear that. Heck, I'll just clear your entire sky. 
scheduled right now. Uh, oh, the goblin moved out, and now they can't see him anymore. That's good. Chasing that poor ram. Hither, thither, and yawn. Mm, killed the billy goat. Joy. Oh, they... Mm, they killed the bunny, basically. They killed my boar. Boars are awesome, though. They don't need food. <sighs> killed the alpaca. I uh, haven't killed that yet, but that's just a matter of time. That's effectively dead. Yeah. say good times, but not really. I can't do anything about it. Now, they can't get in, and they'll leave eventually, but in the meantime, they are disrupting my fortress to something fierce. So, this is me cheating. Yep. No more siege. Oh, and uh, pull the lever. my cheateriness and reclaim all of that lovely stuff that just got left by all those goblins. I cheated. I'm willing to admit it. Let's see what happened to my animals. Obviously all my hens, roosters, geese, they're all safe. They're fine. Uh, all my birds, basically, are just fine. Dogs and cats. Ooh, I can train you for war now. that I can train. He's a pet, so no. I do have a male lamb, which will turn into a ram eventually. Uh, I don't know if he's still alive. Have to find some of the bodies, I think, before we know for sure. When the animals are declared missing for a week or more. Yep, just like that. Wait, wait, wait. Go here. Dead, missing. Okay, some bunch of dead goblins. Whatever. Uh, missing bunny, missing billy goat, missing boar. Missing horse, missing you, 
and missing the alpaca. No, that alpaca was wool. Not so worth a sheep, but still. Hopefully, the loss of so many pets is not going to cause a tantrum spiral. Okay, they are inactive, which is good. And our dwarves are giving birth. Wait, what? Seriously? We're already over the 150 cap. Why are we still giving birth? being found. I do have some work being done on the danger room. All the equipment is in place finally, as you can see. And now we're just linking it all to the lever. I will pull the lever. It'll show me what ones are available. I'll link the mo some more pull the lever twice, and that'll show me yet again what's available to link, and just keep repeating until everything's linked up. Right, I want to make sure nobody's going to try to bury any pets in here. If you don't go into the DNet file, it will automatically, tr by default, try to put pets into uh, into tombs, which can chew up your tombs really, really fast. Okay, now our DF. DF hack thing that I really do like, and I don't consider it to be cheating, is the uh, automatic unsuspend. I can't do 30 blocks. I can do 22 though. Let's see, that's 15, 18, 21. could have done another three. Oh well. So what we'll do is we'll do slate down the center here. I'll make walls of limestone along this length. And then we'll just start extending the slate out that way. Eventually. This stuff will never really go away. It's just kind of stuck there. They'll never clean it. It's not actually refuse, but it is outside, so they'll just never clean it. something I probably shouldn't. I'm going to remove that construction right there. This will give my dwarves a way in and out for the next couple of minutes while I build myself a new bridge. Because that bridge is useless. And quite frankly, dangerous. doing the deconstructing too. Who is this? 
Yep, child. Whoever said children are useless. <laughs> is even if I do remove that bridge and people fall they're only going to fall one Z level so it's not like they're going to be hurt that badly by it alright I'm going to put you on hold again back and uh, when if something interesting happens. Okay, so it looks like the bridge is almost finished being deconstructed. Um, just wanted to go over, highlight some my own minor changes that I've made uh, before the siege showed up. Around my farmer's workshops, I have put in a plant and milk storage. Around my fishery, I've put in a raw fish storage, which is really useful. Cuts down on transit time. There we go. Obviously, you got most of the uh, bedrooms finished. What you're seeing here is basically just uh, damaged goods the dwarves have taken off ditched off the side just because they're slightly worn or very worn as the case may be. I dug out a little extra space here. I'm just going to turn this all into wood storage. That way in the event that I have another siege I can actually basically outlast it and just keep crafting. Yes, I'm a dirty, dirty cheat. But that's okay. Let's see. Our main digging shafts are basically proceeding, albeit slowly, mainly because of the frame per rate, frame per second rate of like in the low twenties. That's terrible, and most of that is because I am recording at this point. I do have some water flow issues that I can't really fix at this point because, well, I'd have to drain out the entire cistern. And guess what? I didn't do. I didn't make a release which is fine. Dwarves will drink this down and, well, eventually drink it down. Actually, if I remember correctly, I think I... Let's see, this one... Did I make notes? Notes. I did not. I really should have. think a pull lever I think this lever is linked to this gate and if it is I can just drain this out completely and that'll help some of my FPS problems Just dwarves getting drinks. That is one thing I am mildly disturbed by. Apparently... I don't... 
don't have enough dwarves just just doing brewing. Even if I do, apparently, it's not keeping up. So I am going to find myself a second and a third. Now he's a plant processor. I'm going to leave him on there. Basically, you're just going to turn off all of their secondary laborers except for food hauling. No, I'm even going to turn that off. That way, I have a total of three dwarves dedicated to doing nothing but brewing alcoholic beverages. We've got just a few too many dwarves here that basically. My drink stocks are dropping precipitously, and there's not much I can do about it. In fact, my food stocks have dropped precipitously to boot, but we'll take care of that later. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, raises to the left. I need four limestone blocks. All four are right there, conveniently. I didn't get any mechanisms out of it, unfortunately. I'm hoping those are hunting dogs, yes. The reason being is that my hunting dogs are male, and by putting male dogs here, I'm not going to have piles of puppies hanging around all the time. would otherwise, which would be bad. Okay, so that's basically what we're doing here. Um, I think I'm going to cut the video here and basically call it a night. The dwarves are a little less happy than they were. Only 44 ecstatic, 81 very happy. 30 content, and the number of ecstatic dwarves is dropping pretty quickly. Hopefully by having an increase in the alcohol content, that will help. I may need to get a third still up and running, at least temporarily. Plus... meat or processed fish. I do have a ton of eggs. Eggs are good. I don't actually have any prepared meals though. This is a problem. Why don't I have any prepared meals? Because the sole person I have capable of cooking is actually also a mason and a bunch of other things. Right. Okay. I need a cook. I, mean, I swear I had a peasant just grow 
grow up. Somebody who just became a peasant. Aha, uh -huh, I did. Congratulations, you just became the cook. You don't even have to clean, you just cook. Cook to your heart's content. The dwarves aren't going to go hungry. I've got plenty of eggs, they're not actually going to go hungry. But, it's better to have... Ooh, okay. Well, you're a mason now. A couple of dwarves that grew up. Uh, you specifically don't have any jobs. You, on the other hand, are a peasant of little skill. You are a mason now. I would tell you when a dwarf grows up in a more blatant way. Look at that. I've just had some dedicated haulers who aren't doing anything other than hauling, and that's useful. Believe me, it's useful. But I could have had them doing other things. Now I've got two dwarves that are pretty much dedicated just to brewing, a dwarf that's dedicated just to cooking. Hmm. Should actually take one of my new masons here and make him a secondary cook. A hauling cook. Just in case. My military dwarves aren't much better at their military stuff, but we'll change that here in a little bit. Let's see. Oh, somebody's getting stuff done there, finally. Yay. Okay. So the danger room is moving along. Uh, my wood stockpile is moving along quite nicely. I'm still basically making lots and lots of pig iron and smelting down raw limonite and hematite to make more pig iron. Uh, I think I've gotten through all the bituminous coal that I had, which kind of makes me sad, but I wasn't expecting much else. I do have a lot of goblinite to melt down, and I can probably make some more steel bars. So I want to basically cut the video here, um, let this run out some more, and uh, y'all have yourselves a very good one. I just basically wanted to show you the, the siege and the new mood. And, uh, yeah, leave a comment, uh, post, if you want to be named, just let me know who you want and what you want to be able to do.